Hello ladies and gentlemen, Panzer here and welcome to DOOM! Yeah, you might be thinking, haven't you already done a video on this? Uh, and yes I have actually, I did one several weeks ago during the multiplayer beta test and I'm happy to report the game is finally out and is, well, in a lot of ways better than the beta was and you'd hope that is the case. This is a game that has received fairly underwhelming response from a lot of people and I don't really think that's fair. Uh, after all, this is a very good month for FPSs with games like Battleborn coming out and really showing where the sort of team-based MOBA-style FPS is really going to. And then there was Overwatch, which had an open beta, which I had a lot of fun with, and that's kind of coming out later on this month as well. And then now there's Doom, which has a single-player mode, a full campaign, and a pretty decent multiplayer. The only thing is, it feels a lot like Call of Duty now because of one very simple thing that it does. And I'm going to demonstrate it right now. So this is the launching screen that, uh, that you get when you start it off in, on Steam. And normally, if you just go to campaign, it starts and goes straight away, as you would expect. But if you click multiplayer, it has to relaunch the game. Which is something Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and Black Ops 3, and come to think of it, Black Ops 2 did as well. Um, where you had separate things. The only difference being that, of course, you could launch them directly from Steam as single player or multiplayer, and that was kind of okay. However, <laughs> Doom doing this just annoys me a little bit. It just seems like something that shouldn't be a thing, but for whatever reason it is. So we're just going to go straight into the multiplayer. I'm probably going to have a look at the single player on my own, I think. Let me know down in the comments if you do want to see me play through the single player. Um, because I probably will end up doing that anyway, it's just whether or not people want to see a video of it. But, here we are. So, uh, if you haven't seen what the multiplayer has to offer, go and have a look at the beta video I did, because some of the stuff is kind of the same. However, uh, we have a lot more character customization, there's far more, uh, armor pieces and sets to choose from. I mean, my character doesn't even look anything like it did in the beta version, and there's more patterns, more deta details, the weapons, there's even more weapons than what I showed before. The chain gun is in the game and it's one of the first guns that you can use in multiplayer, uh, which isn't as good as you would expect it to, to be honest, I kind of don't like it. And then there's the burst rifle, which I do like, which is entirely new uh, as compared to the beta version. So previously the number of weapon choices you had would fit on the screen, now it goes pretty far down. There's also a lot more game modes. If we have a look, there's more game modes here. We can go through a playlist of all the game modes. We can go through round-based modes instead. There's a fair amount of game modes here and a lot more maps to choose from. So we're going to start off with a very simple team deathmatch and see here what's what. Alright, so there's one of the new maps on Doom. And, uh, and I'm using the... The burst rifle, which uh, I mentioned earlier. There's a sniper over there. Oh, well, he's dead. So, uh, yeah, the... I want to talk a little bit more about the actual game and the gunplay in particular, because uh, let me get this cleared up immediately. This is not an arena shooter. It has all the hallmarks of one. Weapon pickups, uh, health pickups and all sorts of things. No reloads. It's all that the original games like Quake and, uh, and Unreal Tournament used to have. However, this isn't an arena shooter, and the reason I'm going to say by, by pure definition, it really isn't. Uh, this, in fact, plays out a little bit more like a Twitch shooter. And you'll see that with the, the way it plays. It's more like the reactions-based gameplay of games like Call of Duty with weapons having a predictable spread in a way and I believe on consoles there is also aim assist but it really is more reactions based than pure skill based in the traditional sense so right here we do have damage numbers uh, which I don't particularly mind it's more of an RPG thing and that's the demon run 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 and run away Run away. And, uh... A lot of the reactions... <laughs> I'm having a lot of difficulty speaking. 
uh, because it's a very mentally taxing game. But really, it's one of those games that require more solid reactions uh, than just aiming. So uh, I'm going to demonstrate this just with the way that I'm playing right now. You'll notice that a lot of the weapons have alternate fire modes and things like that, which is very common among the very old school shooters, as you might see, uh, with less like of things like aim down sights and so forth. Now you might notice uh, all these damage numbers and things, that some of them come up in yellow. Those represent critical hits, and that's if you hit places as you might expect, like the head. Um... Oh jeez, I'm having real difficulty aiming at this guy. If you hit places like the head, for example, that does count as a critical hit. Lava, on the other hand, and counts as a suicide. So it just makes it a lot easier to know if you what what you're actually doing to the enemy. There's less sort of guesswork and thinking how many you know how much health does he have left, uh, and you can kind of predict how many shots it's going to take to kill somebody since all weapons have a very predictable amount of damage. In fact, there's no variation whatsoever. All weapons do the same amount of damage per shot. Now, that gas cannon is actually one of the pickup weapons, so any of the very powerful weapons are available by pickup only, and they're located in specific places around the map. Now, these locations do tend to rotate, so, of course, you can't just memorize the locations of them and then go for that, which is kind of one of the things that... that people would use to define an arena shooter is that uh, map knowledge played such an important part uh, in those games where you knew where the more powerful weapons were and therefore you could base your strategy around those, knowing when to pick them up, knowing when the cooldowns were. But in this case, because there's a slight amount of randomization in that aspect, uh, you don't tend to see that, that happen all too often. I'm just going to throw a grenade at him, that's got no map there. And there we go. So, if I were to describe this game, it's kind of a combination of Call of Duty and the new Halo as well. Because simply just the way it plays is more reaction space, but it also has some elements of the old arena shooters that make it a little bit more like what Halo has actually become. And personally, I, I like that sort of combination because it's not... Oh, shit. It's not something that that uh, PC has really had for for a very, very long time. And yes, I know that there is a new Unreal in the works, and there is a form of Quake that you can still play, but it's not really the same as what it used to be. And I'm probably going to sound like one of those people that's just like, oh, they don't make them like they used to, but they really, really don't. So, when it comes to... And I'm really not representing myself well here. But when it really comes to that sort of game, you know, this is kind of refreshing. Of course, that being said, with some of the games that are coming out right now, of course, that's that's sort of a statement that doesn't really mean anything. Since, after all, there's a lot of games coming out that break the conventions of the traditional FPSs. So, you can't really say that, you know, games aren't innovating in that sense. Personally, I like what this game is doing. Oh, we just kill traded. Since uh, it's it's refreshing. It's a refreshing theme, and it has a very satisfying kind of uh, feel to it. Uh, one, one example, of course, being the, the way that the weapons handle themselves. Now, you don't notice, even with uh, the big for example, this assault rifle, I can fire this like like so. Uh, if I was to switch over to a shotgun, I could fire it, and you don't get that sort of kick on the screen that uh, you know that simulates recoil. You don't get that as you would in a lot of other games, and but in particular the modern. Now oh, that's an ex execution right there. In particular, the modern military shooters have that as well. So that's really what separates it. So the, the trick to the gunplay is really kind of playing to the weapon's strengths, knowing the ranges that you can en engage at, knowing what its alternate fire modes are good for, and it's a very sort of different style of gunplay. Uh, the weapons do sound very nice though, and I think aesthetically they are pretty nice. 
But of course you all mileage may vary. Some people might like the weapons and some people might not. Personally, I find the effects to be very satisfying as well as the sounds having a decent amount of bass and punch to them. Uh, right, so we've got a new weapon. I don't know what it does. Um, it's... I should have probably checked the instructions before using it. Right, so this is called the Hell Shot. And it's supposedly a semi-automatic weapon. But it also fires a sort of missile-like projectile, which is kind of interesting. So, let's see if we can figure out how to use this in the course of the video. But as far as the game goes, the map designs are a little bit hit and miss. I think some of those that I remember from the beta are not as good as I feel they should be. Oh, okay, so it, it sets people on fire. That's what that does. Okay. So it's not a close-range weapon. Right, so... Yeah, the, the map design, some of them could be better, but overall, aesthetically anyway, they look very nice, and they're very well polished, actually. Very pretty game. As I said in the beta, it looks really, really good. Right, let's, let's switch out to a different loadout. I'm going to try something else. Okay, so we've got a rocket launcher and a super shotgun here, so let's see what we can do with this. Going to close range here. Oh, hello! Alright, so that took out a lot of our health. He was firing rockets away at us. Uh, but we got the kill in the end. The super shotgun, incidentally, has the same sort of aesthetic as the... Uh, I guess it wasn't really... I don't know, I don't think it was the original Doom that did that, but, uh... Yeah, double barrel shotguns really being a very popular thing. Uh, in a lot of the classic FPSs, hence why you do tend to see them quite a lot. Uh, I think I might have blown myself up there. The one thing that's really interesting, though, is that, um... Aside from the demon runes as well, those are kind of fun. Uh, the the hack modules, they're, they're sort of like burn cards, as I mentioned before in the previous video. Uh, they're kind of like burn cards from Titanfall. So, you know, they're a one-use type thing, and it's sort of random what you get every time you level up. Uh, so, as you use them, they give you certain abilities. So, in this case, I with Blood Trail, I can see enemies that have been wounded. Uh, I believe wounded specifically by me, so I can actually see them through walls. And uh, I believe I blew myself up there. But we did get a kill for it, so, so I'm okay with that. And uh, there's Bounty, which gives us an XP boost. Definitely making use of it right now. Now, the, the balancing of these uh, hack modules is a little bit strange, because in some cases there are some that specifically affect the highest scored player. Uh, in particular, some that allow you to see them on the map so long as they have the highest score. Which, I don't know I'm, I entirely agree with. It's kind of like a blue shell, really. Uh, but then again, so there's no guarantee that you know everybody's going to get that hack module at once and use them at the same time, so... It's not really too much of an issue, it's just that if you're the highest scoring player, then you run the risk of being visible to just one random person that match. Which, um, I guess if you're really good at the game, it won't really matter to you. And some people are really good with rocket launchers. But definitely, unlike a lot of other games, the starting set of weapons that you get are definitely not weak in any way. And of course, the game does make a bloody mess. Um... Oh, well, this guy looks like Buzz Lightyear. And we got him. Ah, so that's one of the demons, actually. That's a Mancubus. He's very big and heavy, and he's carrying rocket launchers. The only downside of him is that he can't move particularly quickly. But he does have a ground AoE attack that he can use as well, so you can't really get close to him. So it's one of those enemies that you do kind of have to wait out. Uh, again, this is another thing that I think is going to need a fair amount of balancing, as the actual demons themselves. While they are a pickup, 
and they are time limited, it can really very quickly change the tide of a game. Particularly if the enemy team sticks very, very close to their demon, then uh, they can really do a lot of damage to you. Alright, so uh, <laughs> shotgun duel there did not go my way. back up here and I believe I, I got teleported into which is interesting right so let's switch back over to our burst rifle here the only downside that I have is that the game doesn't really encourage you to find out what a lot of things do uh, which for people like me, I guess, is not good because we don't tend to really read the instructions a lot. Which we should. We really should. Ah, oh, that guy had a gas cannon. Lost the lead. It is a very close match, though, as it is right now. I, I'm probably not helping with that. Oh, I think he's dead. He is. That guy has a shotgun. I threw a grenade and missed. Demon rune spawned. Right, so yes, yeah, so this is another FPS that's out there and it's good and I'm terrible at it. And I wanted that demon rune. But, well, he has the same demon as I have. That is, that giant naked man is the uh, Baron of Hell. Who is, a, is really as close as a throwback to the original Doom as you'll get. These guys were big, towering monsters, uh, but in this rendition of the game, he's a very big melee tank, is the easiest way of putting it. Very good for charging in there and really clearing out a lot of enemies. He has a melee insta-kill, if I remember correctly. Oh, I was expecting him to go the other way. Well... Now, if there are some negatives I can point out about this game, the main one would be... Oh god, I can't hit him. Would really just be the... How quiet some of these maps are. Like, I have the sound turned down, and I, I hear mainly gunshots, but... If you just stand still, the map is very eerily quiet. Which is... I mean, I guess from an... A purely gameplay point of view is good because of course then you can hear enemies and all that very clearly which is kind of what you want however it does mean that the game has a kind of empty feeling in the actual maps which uh, I'm not a fan of something that I feel that Overwatch did really well is that it incorporated music and sort of little trinkets here and there in the actual maps to make them feel somewhat alive. A lot of interactive items as well do go, go a long way with helping that. Now as another negative point that I have to really uh, point out right now is the mouse acceleration and mouse smoothing uh, is enabled by default and it's irritating as hell so I find a lot of the times maybe when I'm having difficulty aiming at people uh, it's really just because of the mouse acceleration that's there. Now, that can't, as far as I know, can't be turned off. There is a way to turn off the mouse smoothing using the config files by editing something in there, but mouse acceleration, there still hasn't been a way to, to definitely turn it off. And there's no option in-game to do either of those things, which is especially annoying, and it's a really, really big downside of the game. I wish that the developers would have added that in, but it seems like they haven't. But overall... Is Doom any good? And uh, I will say, based on the multiplayer alone, so far so good. I would say, if you're looking for, a, I guess, a more classic FPS, which is kind of strange to say given all I've been saying about it, but one that kind of harks back to what modern shooters have become and kind of distills that into an arena format, then this is the game for you. It's very Twitch based, it requires good reactions and a fair amount of skill with some of the weapons but it's more based on actual reactions than it is the kind of strategy and tactics that our arena shooters were originally known for. 
and uh, the weapons are not as skill-based as uh, they would initially appear. Some of them are, but mind you, things like the rockets, manual detonation and all of that. Sniper weapons, definitely very skill-based, but a lot of the other weapons, such as shotguns, are very reaction-based, so that kind of has uh, th definitely two halves going on there. So, if you're looking for that sort of thing, this would probably be the game for you. I haven't delved into the campaign yet to really know for sure, but from the multiplayer standpoint, the game is shaping up to be something pretty enjoyable. I mean, personally, I've, I've only played about an hour so far of the current multiplayer, and I'm really enjoying it so far. But for what it is, at a $60 price tag, I don't know if a lot of other people will. And I think that's probably the majority of the complaints. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Doom multiplayer, anyway. Uh, go and check it out if you are interested in the game at all. It is a full AAA priced $60 game. So, bear that in mind. It's not a cheap game that you can just pick up. Uh, but let me know down in the comments if you want to see the campaign on the channel. Do let me know if we do get enough... If we get enough people uh, voting for it down below in the comments, I will definitely consider doing the campaign playthrough for you guys. But that is entirely up to you, and don't forget to leave a like if you've enjoyed the video, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name is Panzer, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.